So, you got DaVinci Resolve. This video is primarily for those who are new to not just DaVinci Resolve, but video editing in general. But I think this video will also be helpful for those who have moderate experience in another piece of editing software and just need help transitioning to DaVinci Resolve and knowing where some of the specific tools are. DaVinci Resolve is incredibly powerful. It has almost an absurd number of tools packed inside of it. Seeing all of the different tools and tabs and pages can be intimidating, but I'm gonna walk you through the core tools you need to edit video. This is your first 10 minutes inside DaVinci Resolve. Very quick note off the start. If you are on a Mac, I caution you against downloading DaVinci Resolve from the Mac App Store. There are numerous stories online of people downloading that version of the software and running into problems with permissions and preferences and some features that you don't really wanna be troubleshooting when you're just getting started. So I encourage you to download the free version right from the Blackmagic Design website. So let's get started. This is DaVinci Resolve. When you first boot up Resolve, you will see this, the Project Manager. Right off the bat, DaVinci Resolve is unique. Instead of running off of project files, DaVinci Resolve saves all of your projects into a single database. The big benefit to running a project database is that when DaVinci Resolve pushes out an update to all users, instead of having to update each of those project files that you have stored, you update the database and all of your files are free to use with whatever new features came in that update. DaVinci Resolve is primarily organized by pages. The main way to access those pages is by these icons on the bottom. You have the media page, the cut page, the edit page, the fusion page, the color page, the Fairlight page, and the delivery page. Honestly, when I was writing the script, I forgot about the media page because I never use it. I encourage everyone to start in the edit page. We are not even going to touch the cut page, the fusion page, the color page, or the Fairlight page today. The delivery page will get to. A quick note about the cut page. The cut page was designed by Blackmagic for quick edits. Some of you might be tempted to jump right into the cut page, but the cut page is a specialized tool. If you are just learning to edit, I still recommend you learn the basics of editing in the edit page and then see if the cut page suits your workflow. Over here, we have the media pool. Any file or song or picture that you wanna use in your project will end up here. While you can drag your clip directly onto a new timeline, instead, I encourage you to drag all of your clips into the media pool. You can right click in the media pool, go to timeline and select create new timeline. Here you can name your timeline, set the number of tracks, and in custom settings under format, you can set the resolution and frame rate you want to use for this video. Then you will see your timeline in your media browser and you can drag your footage from the media pool into that timeline. It is very important to note that after you drag footage onto a timeline, in that timeline settings, you can no longer change the frame rate of the timeline. So it is very important that you settle on a frame rate and make sure that it is set before you start working with footage. Once you bring in all the clips you wanna work with, it's time to get started on your edit. Two of the major tools you will be using are the selection mode, keyboard shortcut A, and the blade edit mode, keyboard shortcut B. When the selection mode is enabled, any clip you click on will have that red outline showing you that is selected. You'll notice that when I click on the audio or video, it only selects one of them for a certain clip. And if I click on a clip and drag it, you will see that it becomes desynced. That is because of this button, linked selection. When it is enabled, DaVinci Resolve will recognize the audio and the video as a single clip, and you can drag them and cut them and edit them as one. But if you unselect it, if you select either the video or the audio, you will be able to move them or delete them independently. Beside that, is the snapping control. Oh, something snappy. When it's selected, your clips will snap together, closing any gap and moving to edit points. But when it is unselected, it gives you finer control of the movement without that jerky snapping. The blade edit mode is the main tool for cutting footage. When you mouse over your footage, you will see the little razor blade icon. And if you click, it will split that clip into two different clips. If you then enable your selection mode, you will see that it selects that portion you cut out and you are able to then move and edit that clip independently from everything else around it. When using your selection mode, if you mouse to the beginning or end of a clip, you will see your playhead change 
and you can drag and slide to trim that portion of the clip. And you can see because I had snapping enabled, when I was trimming, it snapped to that playhead. If you want finer controls, you can zoom with Alt and your mouse scroll wheel or by using these controls over here. Using these tools, you can cut up your footage and rearrange. You can also drag your clips to different video and audio tracks, layering multiple different pieces of footage together. Here's one quirk to be aware of. If you're using the blade edit mode to cut out clips you want, and then you plan on deleting clips you don't want to use, if you select a clip and click the backspace, it will delete that clip and leave a gap. If you select that same clip and click the delete key, it will delete that clip, but shuffle all the footage after it in to fill that gap. This may just seem like a convenient time save, but remember that everything after that clip will get shuffled forward. It's important to know the difference between using the backspace key and the delete key, and to intentionally choose which you want to use in each situation. These are the most basic tools at your disposal. I made this other video to expand on them and to show you a few different methods for working with footage, especially long gameplay recordings. Next to the media pool, we have the effects library. In the effects libraries, you will see your transitions, your titles, some effects, and audio effects like echo, pitch shifting, and reverb. I encourage you to look through this menu yourself and become aware of all the different tools that you have. Personally, I don't think we see nearly enough star wipes. Next to the effects library, we have the edit index. You can ignore this. I have never had a reason to open this page, ever. But besides the edit index is the sound library. It can be really powerful if you know how to use it, which is why I made a whole other video about the sound library. On the other side of the screen, first we have the mixer. This is your main audio control. If you are playing multiple clips at the same time, you can take these faders and drag them to make one clip quieter or one clip louder. Next to the mixer, we have a metadata page. When you click on a clip, you will see all the information pertaining to that clip here. Probably not essential if you're just jumping in, but it's good to know where to find this information. And then beside that, you have the inspector. The inspector is really powerful and not just against blur guns. Pew! Here you have a host of different controls covering a range of different settings for whatever clip you have selected. Since I have two clips on two different video layers on top of each other, if I select the top clip and reduce the opacity, it will start to become see-through and you can see the clip underneath it. The transform controls are your basic controls of zooming the clip size, the position of that clip, clip rotation, funky things like pitch and yaw, and flipping the video on the X or Y axis. And you have more advanced settings like cropping, a cool Ken Burns style dynamic zoom, stabilization, retiming, and lens correction. Wicked. This inspector will also be the location that you can control some of your effects. I'm gonna grab one of these free fusion titles that come with Resolve and drag it over my footage. If I select that clip and look in my inspector, I now have a host of new controls just for that title. Even effects like this star wipe we had earlier. If we zoom in and select that transition, you'll know it's selected by that red outline. If we look in our inspector, we have custom settings for that transition. It's a five point stars currently, but you can change it. Color. Ooh, nice. Offset, just cause. This opens up a lot of customization. All of these stock transitions, these stock titles can transition to be completely unique to you. Here we have video tracks on three different levels, but using this inspector control, we can zoom them all to different shapes and position them all around our screen. I don't know if I would recommend this particular layout, but you see how powerful this tool can be. And then you put it all together. This is very bad, but it demonstrates all the different powerful tools that you can use in your videos when you will spend more than 10 minutes making your video. Please spend more than 10 minutes making your video. One other thing I want to touch on is some of the retiming controls because that's a pretty popular effect and it's not controlled in the inspector like some other things we've looked at. Right click and open retime curve. Then you want to change this from retime frame to retime speed. 
This line represents the standard speed of a clip. If you were to raise it, that would increase the playback of that specific clip. If you were to decrease it, that clip would start playing back in slow motion. The power of this tool comes from this little diamond over here. If you click, you can set a keyframe and independently on each side of that keyframe, change the speed. So before this encounter, I'm gonna crank this up to 300 times speed and then go back down to 100, set another keyframe and then ramp it back up. And then you will see as we play, it's faster, it slows down to real time and then ramps back up. If you select these keyframes and click this button, it will ease that motion and you can even change the level of ease. So instead of a snap, it slows down over time and then ramps back up. After you are done fine tuning your time controls, you can click this button to hide that graph. Once you have your video arranged in the way you want with the titles and effects you want, you need to export. One way of doing this is going up to file, quick export. Here you have some basic options, including the option to render and upload directly to YouTube and Vimeo. But even if you're a beginner, I recommend you move to the delivery page. Here you will see another timeline of your video, a film reel rundown of all the clips you used, and here you have the ability to fine tune your export to a much greater degree. I'm gonna start with a YouTube preset, choose the name of my file, and then choose the location I wanna export. I'm just gonna export right to the desktop. Here you can double check, make sure your settings are what you want. If you are on a system with an NVIDIA graphics card, you wanna come down to this setting and change it from native to NVIDIA. This will use the full power of that graphics card on export and give you a much quicker render time. You also have the option here to upload directly to YouTube, although I don't always recommend that. Now, the option you have here is add to render queue. That shuffles that project over here to the other side of the screen where you will need to click start render to export that video out. Then if you navigate to that location, you will see your video ready to watch, upload, and share. Pew! This has been an extremely quick introduction to the main tools that you will need to edit video inside DaVinci Resolve. There are tons of more advanced tools inside DaVinci Resolve that I hope you explore and that I hope to cover in upcoming videos. But I hope that just focusing on these core tools will get a lot of you off the ground and running and exploring and trying new things. Learning to edit is extremely rewarding, but we've all got to start somewhere. I hope this has been a good starting point for you. If it has been, please like this video, leave a comment below with any questions you have and subscribe so you don't miss any upcoming videos where we will dive into some of the more advanced and fun features inside DaVinci Resolve. Thanks, I'll see you next time.